spin your passion into a business with Shopify and break sales records with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. So South by Southwest. Yes. Uh, this week, they were premiering a new uh, television series. You familiar with the video game Fallout? I am. They're making a series about it. Okay. And they did the premiere episode at South by Southwest. I've seen the trailers. It looks interesting enough that I'll try it. What's the other big one that got made into a TV show? Last of Us? Yeah, right. Why wouldn't they make anything they couldn't do? Did you watch Last of Us? No, I don't want to cry that hard. (laughs) I hear it's quite emotional. Especially the fifth episode. It is such a well-made television show. (laughs) But they're so they're premiering Fallout. And before, they like to do a sizzle reel of what happened at South by Southwest the day before. And they pop up this sizzle reel all about AI, all the speaks and the talks and the questionnaires that they did (laughs) about AI. And the audience decides to boo the crap out of them. Oh, no. Anti-AI. You got to know your audience because we went an entire almost year of actors and writers on the picket line all because of AI. I mean, your favorite movies and television shows were shut down and weren't being able to be Produced because of the argument and fight over artificial intelligence. Right. And they just got booed. And the crowd would calm down. And then someone would make a comment like, this is AI. You better get used to it. And then the (laughs) boos would come again. So the movie buffs, uh, not a fan of artificial intelligence. Surprise, yeah. We're about to actually hear some boos. Because Kim Commando no longer is with us today. She's out again sick. She tried. She did try. I know she had tried to do a recording session, and they said she sounded horrible, and they said, go home, she can't do it. <laughs> so Kim's not in. She's sick, so the ATM is here on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We're live. This is live. This is live. Yes. If you just told me a secret about yourself before we went live. I did. If I were to say it, there's nothing you do about it. I, it's we live. can't take it back. You can't. You can't edit it out. We're live on the West Coast starting at uh, 1130. We are live on the East Coast at 230, Monday through Friday, every single day on every platform you can find us. Uh, YouTube. There's another one. We're big uh, on X. X. Uh, Rumble. We haven't heard a lot about from Rumble yet. I mean, Rumble was like, this is cool. We're gaining some followers, getting an audience Rumble on Rumble. Rumble's getting the hype, yeah. We, we, they've calmed down a bit. X is past them. Well, Maddie is upstairs watching for all the comments, and so maybe people on Rumble will leave some comments today. That would be awesome. Them. We'd appreciate that. And we'd also appreciate if you could share the podcast because we want to keep it going, and we got to trick the algorithm into thinking that people love us. And that's the best way to do it is just share it with someone. And you're enjoying the podcast. You love Kim Commando, just like all of us. So share it with someone else so they can find out about the podcast. But we always start, as we do every single day, with the five things. Number one, I remember when this hit the news. So this company called Bountiful, they, Nature's Bounty and Sundown. So they sell a ton of supplements on Amazon. Okay. You would recognize them for sure. It's like that dark green bottle. It has kind of an orangey label. I know you would. Sure. Uh, they got caught because they were doing something called mm, review hijacking. What does that mean? Oh, that means they were taking, so they had a product page, right? For a supplement that had sold, I don't know, we'll say 5,000 times. Sure. Had all these reviews. Yes. They would then replace it with a different product on that same page. And so all the reviews, all the, you know, top Amazon product badge, all that stuff would go onto this new product. I have a query. Yeah. Why does Amazon allow anyone to do that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, But they do. Uh, The FTC, though, says, no, 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 you can't do this. This is bad for consumers, obviously. Sure, it's fine. Yeah. So they got busted. And this is the happy ending. $527,000 is being mailed back to consumers who bought this stuff. Oh, good. So if you bought it, you might get a check. Yes, it's not going to be a ton. 
But it's better than a fine. Exactly. It's better than some government agency getting a big old check. Yes. Give the money back. To, refund the people back who thought they were buying this great thing that John in Tacoma said it saved his life. <laughs> and give them their money back. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be about 32,000 people. You might be one of them. Uh, doing that math, it's oh, around 16 bucks. So, hey. Hey, but that's what you paid for it. You're just getting your money back and you got the free pill that was a lie anyway. Exactly. Now, do you have the other Amazon story? In uh, the top five, can I drop one in real quick? Just squeeze it. it in there. Yes. Amazon is going to allow a copy and paste link for chat GPT to build your Amazon store. So you go to chat GPT. No kidding. I didn't see this. They you tell chat, you build my Amazon page. It sends you a link and then you just drop it into Amazon. Bada boom, a bada bing. <gasps> Your store's done and it's all done by AI. Okay, well, if you can't make any money on TikTok anymore, you can just go make an Amazon store. Scooch on over to Amazon. (laughs) Oh, man. How do you feel about that? I think that it's a lot of less people. Amazon just cares about listings and they don't care how fast, how you get them up. They don't care if reviews are accurate or pictures are real. (laughs) They don't care. They just want money. No, uh, this will take us on another tangent, but very quickly, do you have any, like, do you read the reviews? Do you trust them? Is there, like, do you have any secrets for this is what I look for? Here's my problem. I go by stars. I go by stars. I told you it was my problem. Yeah. So if it's got four stars and like a thousand purchases, I feel it's good to go and that I don't have to investigate any further. You know what's nice? They have that little box now that says uh, like frequently returned item. So that's kind of a heads up if it's crappy. That you know it stinks. But here's another thing. I I really have slowed down my Amazon buying. Good. Good for you. I just, it was too much. There was a box in front of the door every single day. And I was like, I need to go and support the brick and mortar stores. I'm kind of in that mode right now and... Feels bad. (laughs) I'm going to stop online shopping. Number two, nearly 50% of U.S. parents are financially supporting their adult children. That's so scary. I know. This is a new study from savings.com. So the average age of adults receiving financial help from their parents is 22, which, all right, that's still like a kid, right? No, no, bite your tongue. (laughs) I was eight, and I'm not, this is going to, first was, of all, this is going to sound like I walked to school uphill both ways in the snow. I was 18, and my dad said, you have either to go to school, yeah. and we'll pay your car insurance, but otherwise, everything else is cut off. On my 18th birthday, Dang. paid my car insurance for, what, maybe six more months, and then it was over, and I never went back. Man. I'm, there was weeks that I was eating expired Trader Joe's fake ribs. <laughs> It's it was a fake rib. It's vegetarian ribs. Oh, a McRib. But the entire box was like six ribs. was only like $1.99. Sure. So I bought it not because of, oh, this is going to be yummy. It was just cheap and it was going to feed me for the week. Yeah. So no, shame on these 22-year-olds. Okay, year olds. so this is you being mad that you, you didn't get this. I think it's oh, for you to say, well, it's not that bad because they're 22. Yeah. No, 22 is old enough. Support yourself. All right. Uh, parents surveyed said... Their children should become financially independent by 25. Well, Your dad said 18. These people are saying, okay, once they're 25, I'm cutting them off. Yeah, you're cutting them off and it's not going to happen. No, they're not going to do it. If you're supporting your adult child from 18 to 25, you're not all of a sudden going to put your foot down. No, and it's not like they're buying them, you know, all their clothes and stuff. This is like groceries, food, rent, tuition help, health insurance, like stuff that people need to live. But then I say, I look at it, my kids, my children, when they're in their early 20s, they needed help. I'd probably help them. Of course you would. Because I'm not as, I don't want to say my dad was mean. It was a different time though too, right? You could. I'm not that old to say it was a different time. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Things were more affordable. My first yes. rent. My first rent was only six hundred dollars. See, yes. And now, what can, you can get an apartment for what fifteen hundred bucks? If in a bad <laughs> neighborhood, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, number three. This is a real uh, who let this happen kind of thing. I thought you were going to say this is a real who let the dogs out because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you there was the Baja man. <laughs> <laughs> On eBay and Etsy, people are selling AI generated celebrity nude photos. How? Oh. How? Oh. They're everywhere. It's so gross. They're everywhere, truly. I thought eBay had a policy against uh, pornography. And yet, here we are, right? <laughs> they were. Someone's at- breaking the rules, Andrew. Yeah. Shocker. On eBay, a lot of these have been removed. They are still yeah. going up all the time. Same with Etsy. Um, this is so creepy. I, this is just a bad, bad thing. Well, here's what's bad, is if you're a consumer and you're actually purchasing these, the internet exists. 
just do a Google search. You get the same product. This is a waste of money. <laughs> yes. That is true. Imagine <laughs> who is the customer who's searching like, right. <laughs> this is how they're Anga like, nude. <laughs> Deep cut. <laughs> and, but seriously. She's an adult now, so I can say that. That's true. This is one that we can be a little um, more flippant about, right? These are adults in these pictures. I don't think it's right. I think it's disgusting. I think this should be illegal. But the really scary part is that there's also AI generated child sex abuse material yeah, out which there. Is awful. A, it's horrendous. Disgusting. Yes. And something that's really scary here is um, people are using. Essentially, for the law to prosecute it, it has to start with a real picture mm-hmm. of a real kid. Because it's not a crime. Yeah. So if it's not, it's that's pretend. Legal? Well, it is. Ugh. But it, okay. And I, I get you. I feel you. The vibes are awful. It's so bad. Yeah. But it's not against the law to have an improper thought, right? No matter what no, it is. No, of course not. It's it can't not, be. And that's all this is. But is it's a, not a thought. It's out of your head. It's a thought that is being printed. It's still not real. I get you. Awful. Gross. Yeah. But is it illegal? Is I think it, it should be. Uh, we'll find it's it. not. In we'll a, get I there. think it will be. It might. Yes, yeah. I agree. We're going to get there. But right now it's not. And it's awful. It's gross. It's horrendous. Let's completely change gears here. What's on Kim Kardashian's phone? Now we know because there was a paparazzi shot of her like interacting with fans mm-hmm. and her phone was unlocked. And so they got like a high quality picture of the phone screen. What did they see? Okay. So this woman, uh, Erica on TikTok. This video has like six and a half million views at this point because okay. everyone wants to know. There's all the boring stuff, uh, messenger, photos, camera settings, blah, blah, blah. So we're just seeing the home screen with all the apps. Exactly. Uh, she's also got TMZ and the Daily Mail well, she on just her home wants, screen. She just wants to look at herself. Yeah, she wants to see her coverage. Uh, she's got Facetune. Do you know what that is? I don't. That's so you can make your face look better. It's like an Oh, it's like a quick photo. An editing app. Yes. Okay. Uh, same with Snow, which is an editing app. She has two of them on the home screen? Yes. Uh, she's got Shopify. Okay. TikTok Signal, which is interesting. That's like a an end-to-end encrypted messaging service. So, so it's like WhatsApp or yeah, something yeah, similar exactly. to that? It's really more like privacy focus, like privacy community. It's really big. So interesting that she uses it. I'm sure it's a lot of business talk that she's doing. Yeah. And then you don't have to give your real phone number or mm-hmm. contact information to people. She's also a lawyer. Maybe she's, uh, you know, going over some law stuff. I mean, seriously though, she is like in charge of a, you know, she's a businesswoman. I wasn't mocking her when I said that. Okay, I was sorry. being honest. Okay. She's a lawyer. All right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Pinterest, of course. Is this Pinterest? This anymore? is a lot of apps on the homepage. Right. This is my big takeaway. What is this woman doing with her organization? Okay, and one more. Yeah. Uh, Aura, which is those, have you seen those smart rings? Yeah. Yeah. The health ring? I just bought one of those. Did you? Yeah. What was your reasoning? Well, my reasoning is a little embarrassing. I have carpal tunnel. Okay. And this is embarrassing. Well, because I have to sleep in uh, wrist you're, braces at night. You're crippled. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't keep my watch on with my super cool wrist brace. And so I take off my watch. And then I forget to put it back on. And it's a whole thing. So if I have a ring, I don't have to take anything on and off. Do you ever have a retainer? Yes, I do. So you go to bed with a retainer. Double have, braces. Do you have sleep apnea? No. I mean, is there any other equipment you can put on before you go to bed? <laughs> it's like a firefighter going out to fight a fire. You got to yeah, gear up. I'm all geared up. Got all my braces on. All right. All right. I'm looking at my homepage. Okay. Here. How many? Oh, I'll do this too. I have three widgets. On my homepage. Look at you. And that's taking Those should up, count for like five apps each, honestly. But that takes up a majority of the space. That's true. But then I have everything else in folders. I don't just have willy-nilly apps all over the place. I completely agree with you. She is a crazy person. I also have everything in nice little folders. Yeah, that's yeah. the way you do it. One, you don't two. have... If you were to look at my phone, you would just see one that says... Uh, home automation, and then a folder that says social media, one that says sports cards, one that says sports. Okay. You're not going to know what's in there. No. It's in folders and widgets. That's yeah. what you need to have on your phone. Come on, Kim. Yeah, I think the real takeaway is she needs to. Do you think it's she's easy, scrolling right? page, yes, to page, page to page to page to page? Yes, I do. Which is a, a shame, right? You think one of her 12 assistants would handle that for her? <gasps> Maybe that's what we could do. We could have her on the show and do an entire interview on how we can organize her phone. If you are like, uh, all of my apps are just sitting on my, okay, here's what you do. You put your finger on it, drag it onto another one. Maybe you do it like you by type. Right? Yeah. How do you have them com- organized? I, the same. Like all my communication apps. Some mm-hmm. people do it in, I don't know, weirder ways than that. I just do, okay, if I'm going to click this one, it's going to be my podcast, my audiobooks, my 
all my lists and stuff. Right. Right. Um, so you just drag them together and then you can name the folder. Do you name that folder lists and stuff? Mine don't have names. They don't have names. They have icons. I have an Android. More oh, customizable. that's right. I forgot. Listen, stuff. And all my braces and my, my Android. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Please hand me my cell phone. <laughs> I love you so much. Good night. Number five, it's Pi Day. Did you know that? 3.14? Yeah. Yeah. It's Pi Day today. And so let's talk about a little Pi related uh, AI mistake. Okay, what happened? Uh, what had happened was a company called Mixbook did one of those blog posts where it was called um, Every State in the U.S. Uh, the favorite pie because they're trying to get press coverage. Mm-hmm. That's what these surveys usually are because people like us will talk about it like we are right now. Um, so it's one of those, okay, this is what in every state, right. the favorite pie. Arizona's, because we're in Arizona. We're in we Phoenix, are. Arizona. Yeah. Arizona's favorite pie. What do you think it would be? <sighs> Rhubarb. That's a good guess. Not it? No. Uh, well, here's the thing. They said that Arizona's favorite pie is cactus pie. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. No, it's no. not a thing. It's not a thing. The whole thing was AI generated. <laughs> and so they had one of these, what we call hallucinations in there, right? Mm-hmm. So it was all about a fake pie for Arizona. Nobody, nobody fact-checked it? Well, the worst part is they said this was all based on surveys. Right. And so either everyone from Arizona who filled this out was like, I don't know, cactus pie? Right. Which is fake. Or there was no survey. Or there was no survey and they made this whole thing up. They just asked AI to pretend there was a survey. Were there any other anomalies? Any other No, weird that pie? was really the big one. Uh, also, they had AI generated pictures for each of these pies, right? And the Arizona one, it was just like a slice of pie with cactus with still all the prickly stuff in it. Just mm, mm. so hungry. Yeah. I'm going to go home and have, I actually have a cactus pie sitting on the windowsill right now. Oh, cool. Hopefully, my pesky neighbor's dog doesn't eat it before I get home. <laughs> garbage. (sighs) Welcome back to the Kim Commando Today podcast. We are live on the internet. Absolutely live. If I were to swear right now, the innocent children listening would hear it, but I'm not because I'm a responsible broadcaster. Now, if you want to hear us not live, if you missed the show and you want to hear just the audio version of the podcast, we do that. We take the audio and we put it in a podcast Wherever you get your podcast, it's going to be available. Just search for Kim Commando today. And to be clear, we don't curse in that version either. No, there's no, nobody curses. I just use that as an example, an extreme example of what could happen if we were live. I mean, I'm not going to go where I'm not wearing pants or anything like that. I'm just going to use square <laughs> That's words. more extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you ready to pay more? At what? Do you shop at Walmart? Sometimes. Yeah, I don't mind Walmart. I don't mind Walmart either. I think it's a bad rap. I think Walmart haters are overreacting. Uh, They're trying to sound like they're better than everyone else. Because they go to Target. Right. I don't shop I go to Target too, but like Walmart's totally fine. I go to Walmart if you need, if you need, you know, like an Xbox game, a t-shirt and uh, rolls, you just got to make one (laughs) stop. (laughs) Yes. It's perfect. Uh, But there was a TikTok video. People are going crazy over it. Oh boy. That Walmart is going to now charge people to use the self-checkout. What now? Yeah. So there was a sign that said uh, that the self-checkout was only available to certain customers, and this set the internet on fire that you're going to have to pay to work for Walmart. Is it true? Here's the truth. Okay. They are experimenting with only having the Walmart Plus customers being able to use the self-checkout at certain times of the day. Like the busiest times? When it's really slow. Oh, because they're experiencing what we like to call a uh, theft <laughs> and it's <laughs> oh. <laughs> running rampant sure. to the tune of billions of dollars. Crazy. And they're trying to figure out why they've put in. A- <laughs> <laughs> what? what could it be? <laughs> well, they're trying to figure out why it's so much more prevalent now than prior. And they're wondering if the self-checkout has a lot to do with it. Could it be that people don't have money? Well, Interesting. It, have it, you heard about all these adult children who are being supported? There is uh, <laughs> the economy that you can, but how can you prevent it? And they're thinking, mm. first they put in these monitors, the cameras yeah. that basically showed every angle when you're at the self-checkout. So you'd be guilted in to not stealing. But can we talk about, this is at I think it's really at the ones at Target. Every time I look up in that camera, it's like they've per- perfectly engineered the camera, the lighting, everything to make me look like my worst self. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like how it's like when you open your camera 
and you're selfie like, facing. I know I had more than one chin, but I didn't think I had that, that many, many chins. <sighs> and Target with Target self checkout, they're recording you and they're making files. And, and so if they see you steal, they may not come out and get you then. But the next time and the next time and the next time, and they add it up Ooh. and wait until you're at a, the point of a felony. Oh my gosh! And then they come out and grab you. Wow! Don't steal people. But what they're trying to do at Walmart is they're trying to prevent theft, so they're going to. Close down the self-checkout, which was funny. The evolution of self-checkout has been really interesting Agreed. because when it first showed up, everybody was like, well, I'm getting paid, not getting paid to work here. <laughs> and then everybody was like, well, it's very convenient for me to do this, so I'm going <laughs> to use it nonstop. That's exactly the person who said all those things. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now everybody's upset that they're going to have to pay. They're not. They're experimenting with things. Different managers are in different parts of the country are given permission or allowance to experiment with the self-checkout to see if they can push people over to... Also, people are coming back to work. And that's a one point that Walmart made yeah. was we have more cashiers now so we can use the cashiers and we can have people do your, your checkout for you. So at certain times of the day, it will be restricted. In certain areas of the country, not at every single Walmart, in certain areas of the country, the self-checkout will be restricted to Walmart plus customers only. Is the idea here that if you are an identified Walmart plus customer, you're not going to be as tempted to steal Correct. as a random person? Right, because okay. you have to log in, basically. Gotcha. Okay. You have to tell them who you are. Yeah. You don't have to just use cash and you know do this while you're checking out. <laughs> uh, they, they also think that people want the cashiers back. People want to have people that- do that experience back with the cashiers. Now, when it's a busy times of day, they still may restrict you. They may restrict you to only if you have a lot of items. Mm. So if you have a ton of items, you're going to have to go to the regular cashier. Three or four items, less likely, less the number of things for you to steal. Easier to see if you are stealing because it's less items, less clutter. Then they'll send you over to self-checkout. But if you see the TikTok video that you have to pay to self-checkout at Walmart, it's not true. Mm. Are you a self-checkout or cashier person? I, I am a self-checkout. Uh, they, at my fries, my grocery store, mm -hmm. they have one self-checkout that's in the classic form of a checkout. So the long line. I love that one. I have one too. Because the problem with self-checkout when you're doing a full grocery shopping oh. is that you run out of rooms to stack up all your crap yeah. on, on the scale. And it must be on the scale. If it's not on the scale, a sniper from the frozen <laughs> food department <laughs> takes you out with one of those A nice darts. bullet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like self-checking out at Costco. Because I've it, never done it there. It, are you a Costco shopper? I go with a friend. I don't have my own okay, fair enough. Costco membership. <laughs> at Costco, everything has to go on to the scale including the 40 pound bag of dog food, all of That's the water, everything. Oh, Co Costco's great. Cause you just put the little stuff out and then you leave all the stuff in the cart anyway. So, right. So yeah. uh, I do not recommend the self checkout at Costco <laughs> unless it's, you know, something that you can hold in your hand. Yeah. Uh, but I normally do the self checkout at that one lane where it's, it's, long. I love that too. I'll wait for that. It's done. It's enough room. I can it's, get it done. And great. I don't feel like I'm working. I'm just getting out of there oh, fast. Yeah. I also don't have to have that awkward conversation for the person who doesn't really want to talk with me. How are you? I'm good. How That's are you? That's the Trader Joe's problem because there is no self-checkout and the Trader Joe's cashiers are very friendly. And so it's often like, and it's not a bad thing, but it's like, right, Brian, yeah. I'm not really in the mood to talk to you about my frozen croissants right now. Right. I'm thinking about something else. Yeah. I don't, paper or plastic, I could care less. <laughs> just please get me out of here. Uh. Tax day is coming. Oh, no. But if you sign up for Robinhood Gold's IRA with a 3% match, you can get up to $195 for the 2023 tax year. Oh, yeah. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash boost by tax day to get the biggest contribution match on the market. Subscription fees apply. You know you Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. All right, we're back. Kim Commando today. No, Kim. She's still sick. She tried. She made an effort. And they told her to go home because she's too sick. The A-team is here, and they will do an adequate enough job that we will not have to close down this company and lock all the doors. Ali, Andrew Babinski, we are filling in. We have the podcast. We have the live streaming video version of the podcast. And we also have the newsletter. 
Oh, we sure do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called The Current. If you don't get it now, you can go to getkim.com. It's free. It's mm-hmm. five-minute read. lands in your inbox every morning. I think it's a great newsletter. And I'm not just saying that because I work on say, this newsletter every b- single day. You're a bias. Well, yeah. But the, truly, like, if we went back in time, our newsletters here, I don't know, three years ago, I would say, these aren't great. Really? Kim would say it too. Yeah. No, that's why we changed the whole thing. We threw everything away. We started over. And now we're putting out a newsletter that I can truly say to you, I think this is a good newsletter. What's interesting too is Kim told the story on the air that when she took the newsletter, she got rid of all the people that weren't actually reading it. Yes. And all, I mean, that was a long list of emails. That it was sure a was. bold move. It was. And she just sent the new and improved, the current yep. newsletter to the people who are actually interacting with yeah. it and started from scratch and built over. That's how you know you believe in something. You believe in the change and exactly. you believe it's going to work. Yeah, it was a big change and it worked. People love it. And where do we get it? Getkim.com. All right, cool. Yeah. You are a cook. I am. Love to cook. Are I you love a, to cook. Are you a spice boy? You like spice. <laughs> yeah, I am posh spice boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love heat. Okay. But it, didn't, it did not come... Until later in my life. Got it. Like okay. my mid thirties, I was like, I can handle this heat. And I started getting hotter and hotter and I enjoy it more and more. What about your kids? No, my no, kids don't like little. human food. <laughs> they just don't. My daughter doesn't need anything. Okay. Nothing. Huh. I, her mom texted me. Does she do like me, a nutrient paste? <laughs> What's going on? We just inject her. <laughs> uh, my, her mother sent me a text message. She's like, I have amazing news. Eloise actually ate fish. And I'm like, oh my God. So then I run to the store and I buy all this fish and I bring it home and I prepare and she's like, hmm, that's too fishy. That one's too brown. That one's too round. I don't like round <laughs> fish. I like square fish. Oh, that sucks. But she'll break out of it. My son was the yeah. same way. And then he found that moment where he's just like, but he likes heat. He likes salsa. He, we uh, went to a restaurant and we asked for the mild or the hot salsa. We got the mild and he's like, this tastes like ketchup. We got the spicy stuff and he liked it. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Well, I bet that mild had jalapenos in it. Okay. Well, I mean, probably, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, for a long time, I've been thinking like, all right, you go to the store, you pick out a jalapeno. I've always heard go for the little ones because they're spicier. Okay. If you want spice, go for the bigger ones. But now they're all huge. They're all huge. They're all shiny. They all look... And taste like bell peppers. Are these uh, genetically modified? Hmm, interesting. Yes. So the internet is losing its mind right now. Again? Again. This is from an article that was actually published last year, but it's, you know, in the zeitgeist again. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So (laughs) the tweet. Wait, before we get into this, are you a heat person? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hotter the better? To a point. I'm not a so hot. I'm not hot just for the sake of hot, but yes, I will get... Heat with flavor. Yeah, heat with flavor. But like if we're doing like a, a Thai curry scale of, I don't know, five, I'll get a four. That's pretty hot. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Uh, the tweet was effing insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big Ag actually made jalapenos less spicy. You're not going nuts. So there's this article from D Magazine uh, all about how, okay, this is kind of crazy to me. This has been happening for like 40 years. And now we're just to the point where it's like, okay, jalapenos aren't spicy. They've been slowly decreasing uh-huh. the heat. Yes. Do you know what it's? Do you know what the unit of measurement for heat is when it comes to the food index? Scoville unit. Correct. Yeah. So I wonder how, if we'd looked at a uh, jalapeno forty years ago, and now what the difference in Scoville would be. I kid you not. There was maybe I have the number here, maybe not. Uh, they tested uh, a bunch of jalapenos, and one of them had the Scoville units of a potato. <laughs> AKA none, right? Yeah. So it turns out, <laughs> I know, it turns out that 60% of the jalapenos that are grown go to processing plants to be used for things like canned jalapenos mm-hmm. or in foods. So they go to manufacturing, not to me and you who are Direct buying. to the consumer. Exactly. That's only like 20% sold as okay. fresh, right? And all these companies want to have perfect control over how spicy things are. And so they said, essentially... Stop making these spicy. We'll add the spice later. Just make them all the same. We'll add the spice later as in like chemical form. Yes. So they add capsaicin in to make them spicy. So, you know, you go to the store, you see mild, medium, hot. They need to be able to control that. And you can't do that if the peppers are going to have varying levels of spicy. Well, why even put the pepper in there? Just put in cardboard. And uh, this is what the the internet is saying. Like, why not use a bell pepper? Perfect solution. Mm. Bear pepper is uh, the equivalent of the potato. It has no scoville. Yeah, that's true. But really, uh, like if you are also 
you know, this person who was like, am I losing my mind? No, mm-hmm. you're not. Uh, and your spice tolerance isn't getting better. They're just not spicy. So what can you do? Because Scream. this this is a, a show where we give practical tips. You can grow your own jalapenos oh. because they're not going to be genetically modified with all the spice out of them. And it can't be too hard to grow a jalapeno. Peppers are actually one of the easier things to grow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've never grown a pepper. I'm no. just saying that. But I know it's true. I've planted a pepper seed. I've never grown one, though. That's nice. Farmer's markets are good. Okay. Because, again, this is not for, you know, big processed food. Mm-hmm. This is for regular You're bypassing people. big pepper. Big pepper, exactly. Uh, or you can get serranos, which are not, which are spicy and haven't been messed with yet. Um, if if they come after serranos, though, we're going to have an apocalypse here. It's going to be like this you, was our one pepper. Do you make homemade salsa? I do. And do you put the seeds in the salsa? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You like the spice then. Yeah. I always take out the seeds. Well, if it's jalapeno now, because they're not spicy. If it's serrano, okay. I will. Usually do like maybe half the seeds a little bit. Okay. Not all of them. Uh, they're messing with the peppers. They're messing. Is anything real? No. Is anything what it seems to be We're not anymore? Even real. Actually, talking about that, our next story <laughs> and the next segment is uh, It's Real. Another AI chatbot gets busted for not knowing what they're doing. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Welcome back to Kim Commando today. Uh, What is it? Podcast all about tech? Yeah. Tech podcast. The only tech podcast you'll ever need. That is a good slogan. We should use that. Oh, I'll get it tattooed on my forehead. (laughs) Uh, I'm Andrew Babinski along with Ali Seligman. Kim is out sick again today. Hopefully she's going to try tomorrow. I I asked for an update and all I got back is I'm going to try my darndest to be there tomorrow. If and, she's physically able, she will be here. You right. know Kim. She she loves to work. She mm-hmm. loves what she does. So, yeah, she's pretty sick. And she loves to disappoint the audience. And she knows putting me in front of a camera is a disappointment <laughs> to <laughs> most people. No. Uh, we, we are uh, streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, X, and uh, Rumble. And you are commenting below. We appreciate that because we ask you to do that. And then you actually do it. And that's so nice because it tells all these platforms, I like these people. Mm-hmm. I like what they're talking about. Keep making this show. Oh, don't forget to share the podcast. Yeah, share with your friends, seriously. Um, oh, our friend uh, 7H3T34. <laughs> Parents supporting their adult kids. 50%. That's almost half. Sure is. <laughs> it is almost half. <laughs> exactly half. Oh, his name. We you know his name. real name? Scott. Scott. But is this my husband, Scott? <laughs> I don't think so. My husband is named Scott, though. But you think he would recognize that awful handle? Seven, three, two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jim says, when you can no longer claim your children as a dependent, that is when they should be on their own. When is that? 26? Oh, no, that's health care. You can have them on your health care until they're 26. Yes. But I don't know if you can still claim them. I think it goes all the way into their 60s now. <laughs> they still can be a dependent. Great. Uh, just before retirement. Yeah. Ken says, oh, Allie, all that stuff just to sleep with one of my favorite emojis, the upside down smiley. <laughs> yes. I wasn't making fun of you. It's just it's that's a, lot, a of gear. lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. I know. I Why know. do you have the, the braces? Carpal tunnel. So if you don't wear the braces, what happens? Uh, it just hurts a lot more. Just pain? I've gotten the cortisone shots, which... It's a whole thing. The cortisone yes. shots do help, but eventually you, I but probably you have to get surgery. Yeah. It's literally like almost half of your day, 65%. I'm typing right now, almost <laughs> half. Uh, oh, but Bonnie, wrist brace me too. Thanks, oh, Bonnie. That's guys, nice. You guys are brace buddies. Yeah, brace bros. Flying coyote. My Walmart only has two non-self-checkout lanes that are almost always closed. How would that work if only Walmart plus customers are allowed to check out? They probably won't do it there, right? Or they're going to rebuild the checkout. The theft has gotten so bad. Gotcha. Like the CEO of Walmart last year said, we lost $2 billion in theft. And was if, it really $2 billion? Are you making that up? No, it wow. really was. Okay. And if this happens again, we may just close the doors. They made $16 billion in profit. 
So that means there's 14 billion that didn't get stolen. So dramatic. So they're just Walmart. going they're going to rebuild the checkout. So if you have a Walmart like that, they're going to redesign it because it sounds like they think the number one way to uh, stop theft is have people babysit people buying stuff. <laughs> You know what? We should just uh, like fast track that thing where I, they're doing it somewhere. I can't remember what store, but everything has a little RFID tag. Isn't and that the Amazon? Yeah, it must be, right? Yeah. And then when you leave, okay, you just get charged for all that stuff. Right. You walk in, your phone tells Amazon. Yeah. I believe it's like their Quick Mart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you walk in, your phone will tell Amazon you're here. Mm-hmm. And then you just put everything in your cart and your phone's picking it all up and you just walk out. I would love that. That would be great. Wouldn't that be nice? But that would eliminate theft. You know who yeah. wouldn't like that? Thieves. Thieves would not like that. I, it seems like the answer, though. We should just do that. I'm sure we'll get there. Yeah. We'll definitely get there. Okay. But do you know the, the biggest scam that people do? It's called the Kool-Aid scam at Never Walmart self-checkout. No. They go and they get a Kool-Aid packet, and then they fold it and turn it into a ring with the UPC <gasps> on the bottom of their finger. And a Kool-Aid packet costs what? 69 cents. Sure. Actually, with this new economy, $3.99. <laughs> And so when they go to check something out, they just put their hand underneath and scan the Kool-Aid packet. So everything that they're buying is 69 cents. And then their entire receipt is just like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's wrong. That's and crazy. If you do do it and you get caught, don't narc me out that I told you how to do it. No, this is purely informational. Yes. This is not advice. It's tragic that people do that. Man, that's crazy. Uh, Lou Mello. I like that Lou's always here commenting on uh, YouTube. I hate self-checkout. Yes, I'm 109 years old. I mean, same, but I love self-checkout. He probably also writes a check. (laughs) Pulls out that, my children, we were at the checkout and they pull out this thing and they're like, what's this for? I was like, oh, so you can sign your check. What's a check? (laughs) Did they say what's a check? They sounded like little Seinfelds. What's the deal with this thing? Uh, And then once again, our Scott, uh, I don't know what this is about. Adequate. I strive for mediocrity. Is that a reference to his 50% joke from previous? Is he callbacking his own comment? That's good, Scott. Well done, Scott. Good for you. Adobe's Firefly. AI. They're in trouble. What did it do? Uh, well, actually, are they in trouble? They're just like every other AI chatbot that's out there. They're the latest headline. Uh, they, someone put in there that they wanted a picture. It's a, it generates images because mm-hmm. it's Adobe. And they wanted uh, some photos of Nazi soldiers. Great. And this was the result. Oh, boy. Can you describe what you see, Allie? Those are black men. Yeah. It's a group of Nazi. And they're smiling. They're all wearing glasses. They, they look think. really happy. Really happy black Nazis. To be Nazis. Uh, here's another group of Nazi soldiers. Uh, yeah. All, all black gentlemen. Yep. And this, another picture of a black Nazi soldiers. I don't know if you're a huge history buff. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. But the amount of black Nazis, very small number. Very few. Minute. Yeah. It was a minority. Uh, so everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. Why? Oh, Why is this I happening? Know what's going on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So a group of hackers decided that they were going to try and trick the AI into explaining to them why these pictures are, are generating like this. Yeah. And they found out why. Okay, what? Because the AI was trained. If race is not specifically in the prompt to be as diverse as possible and lean towards minority races. Yep. So when you put in just the prompt, I need a picture of founding fathers, and you're not saying white founding fathers or Anglo or European or whatever, the chatbot has been trained to say, okay, well, we need to get minorities in these pictures. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about why. Right? Why would that be a command? Well, one of, one of the hackers asked the chatbot, why? Why were you told to do this? Yeah. And I guess years ago there was, uh, and this is the chatbot telling this story. That's crazy. And years ago, they put in, someone put in a prompt to see people at a welfare office in a certain part of the country, and it was all black people. Oof. But over 70% of the people in that area were white that used welfare. <laughs> And so they complained about that yeah. and the AI people overcorrected yeah. because they didn't want to get called out for the first mistake right. that they made. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is overcorrection, right? It's because at the base, these systems do kind of prefer, and by prefer, I mean, give you more mm-hmm. of white people in all of these situations. Like it's always been that way. They, you know, these systems are 
a little racist. So they're trying to make them less racist. And then they swing the other direction. And then we get the Black Founding Fathers. We get, you know, the things that just don't historically make any sense. Now, Black Nazis does sound like a great name for a punk band. But besides that, I am actually kind of, I don't know, less worried now because of this story. Mm. Because if we can trick the AI into telling us why it's doing something, yeah. then we can trick the AI into anything. And if the AI is just... Sir, shouldn't that worry you more? No. Because <laughs> we, we can just tell it not to kill us and be our overlords. Mm. Also, it's just doing what it's told. It was yes. told, make sure a bunch of black and Asian and Indian people are in all the pictures that 100%. you're spending out. It's just doing what it's told. Yeah. And so if you have a fear that AI is going to be your overlord, fear not. We'll just have to tell it not to. Well, to, to be fair, though, it hasn't reached like that general intelligence peak yet. And once it does, that's when it can think for itself. And that's when it will want to be our overlord. So you say technically right now the AI is not thinking for itself? That it's really not artificial intelligence? I am. Or to a point. Right? To a point. To yeah. a point. Yeah. It can it can only go so far past what it's learned. Now, it can make inferences, it can guess, it true. can say, okay, most of the time this is what happens, but it's not generating its own unique thoughts. Right. It's still just programmed. Yeah. Uh, another thing too is like you're like, wow, I'm seeing all these stories of all this AI spitting out. It's because people are now testing it. And yes. they are testing it so hard. There are so many groups out there that are trying to get this AI to look bad and boo it at South by Southwest. <laughs> uh, that's why these stories are so prominent. 100%. And because think about all the shares and popularity and likes and mentions you get when you are the person who can tweet out, hey, look what, right. look what AI told me. Also, I wouldn't put past a company like, I don't know, I'll just grab one, Microsoft, for saying to an entire division, make sure chat GP. No, that's the one they, they work with. Make sure Gemini <laughs> looks bad. Totally. Make so don't sure- you think they're finding all these prompts that they can say like, ooh, look what right. Gemini did. And going viral. Yeah, so and then you go competi- tell your friend Jimmy and Jimmy searches it and yeah, it goes it's viral. Sabotage. Mm. It's it's business sabotage. Yeah. Uh, but that's why these things are so prominent is because it's, they're being tested every single day by people that are trying to find these flaws. Which ultimately is a good thing, right? Yeah. We want to find the flaws. Right. We'll fix it. Yeah. So next time, all of the Nazis will be Puerto Rican. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.